What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, and we are at the new Keto Savage Compound 2.0. And y'all can't tell, but behind the cameras, we got the whole crew, the whole Savage Compound crew, because we're about to establish some macros. We're going to figure out what their BMRs are. We're going to figure out what their, their maintenance intake is, what their starting macros should be. And Dylan, where'd Dylan go? Dylan, can I borrow you? Dylan so willfully volunteered uh, to, to be our test subject here. We're going to test everybody's numbers. We're going to get their body fat and their macros and everything. And we're going to, you know, keep you up to date with their, what their goals are and what their progress is going forward. We're all about being healthy here, but we're going to use Dylan as our test subject and, uh, use him as an example. So Dylan, are you ready to rock? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. All right. So real quick, y'all, before we dive into the specifics, I want to talk a little bit about what you see behind me here. We've got our maintenance intake. So before you can know where you're going, you have to know where you're starting. And before you can know what your macro should be for either building muscle or losing body fat, you need to know what your maintenance intake should be. This is a calculation back here. We'll dive into that. Ideally, you would know what your maintenance intake is simply by tracking for you know a pretty significant period of time and seeing where your body starts to level out. But if you don't know what that is, we can use this calculation. So maintenance intake, is your TDEE, total daily energy expenditure, which is your BMR, basal metabolic rate, plus NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, plus exercise, plus TEF, which is the thermic effect from the food that you're eating. Um, so we're gonna dive into how to calculate this so that you can do this on your own at home and figure out what your maintenance intake should be, but that's what we're diving into today. So let's figure out what Dylan's macros should start out at. All right, Dylan, get naked, bro. Not fully naked. I want to keep this G-rated, but take take shirt off, et cetera, et cetera. So we have an in-body machine, uh, one of the at-home in-body machines. We're going to test his body fat with that. We're also going to do a caliper test, and we're going to use the Jackson Pollock seven-point test. There's three-point test. There's like Navy test, which is like a tape measure around your neck and waist. This is a really good, accurate way to do it if you're using the calipers. So Dylan's got an app pulled up. I am also not a pro, so... I might be a little off. Crystal's a pro. She's a pro. So first things first, let's go ahead. Dylan knows his weight. He stepped on the scale. What is your weight, Dylan? 235 and a half. 235 and a half. All right. And what's your height? 6'4". Uh, 6'4". So we're going to start out with the chest measurement using the caliper device. <laughs> um, so this is a medical grade caliper device. In case you all want to like see a little bit more, rotate just a smidge there. And this is going to be all in millimeter measurements. So what you get on that one? So there's a bunch of different apps. Uh, there's one called Body Track that I use. He's using a Google Play Store app. So basically just plugging in that for the chest measurement. What's the next one, Dylan? Next is going to be abdominal. Abdominal. <laughs> Tickle measurements don't count. <laughs> Twenty-eight millimeters. That's good. Then we have what? Thigh. thigh. Look at those quadriceps. I try to flex, and they're gonna do Yeah, that would be really hard for me. This is the easy part. Yeah, because my thigh muscles are so outrageous. Eighteen. Eighteen millimeters. This is the longest thing. Tricep. You're not supposed to flex it, though. Just relax. Did you see a difference? <laughs> Ellen? No. Is that Morgan or is that Ellen? That was that was, oh, was it? That's funny. I heard it from over there. Got great friends. Yeah, you do. 17? 17 millimeters. I'm not going to pronounce that. Uh, subscapular. And ideally, when you're doing this, you want to have the same person do the caliper test on you each time. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be inconsistent, so I would highly encourage that. 16? 16 millimeters? Uh, super iliac. Super, super iliac. This is, this is our. Um, <laughs> right here. Oh, 
Was it by the belly button? Yeah, so that's So two, just, just to the left of the, or right of the belly button. Twenty millimeters, and mid axillary, the last one. So just like your neck. Twenty millimeters, and then hit calculate, and according to this. Oh, yeah. It shows 19.09% body fat with the Jackson Pollock seven point test. And Dylan, let's go ahead and do that again. Um, we did it earlier before we got on film, but we're gonna go ahead and do the in body machine as well. I, I wiped it down so you should be good. All right, so go ahead and step on there. Wait, let's make sure the height is right. Six four? Yeah. All right, step on there. 238.5 pounds. I ate three pounds of food. <laughs> and then hold that, let it do its thing. All right, so according to the end body, he's got um, four, this is interesting, 14.9, is that 0.7? So this says 14.7% body fat. He did the same test right before he ate dinner, and it was 17.5. 17 17 so we're going to do it based off the 17.5 number. Uh, <laughs> sorry, but the thing about these in-body scales, the bathroom scales in general, is that they're, they're measuring your lean mass, and they're calculating the body fat based off of that with a, an equation based off a of total weight. If you eat a lot of food, if you drink a lot of water, that's all gonna be partitioned towards lean mass, which is gonna show your body fat being skewed. So we wanted, to get, we wanted to get a more accurate measurement before he ate, but he was getting hungry. So we're gonna use the 17.5, and the uh, caliper was, what was it, 19.5? 19.5. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll, just, we'll just average that out and do like 18 and a half or something. And Robert's guess was 20, so. Yeah, I was pretty close on, his, on my guess. So we'll, we'll go with 18.5 throughout the calculation. Sound good? Okay. All right, so now we've got Dylan's stats. Let's start plugging that into our calculation here. So BMR, we need BMR to determine our total daily energy expenditure. In order to find BMR, we have this formula here. This is called the Muller formula, and it's one of the many methods used. I like this one because it takes the sex into account. It takes... Um, lean body mass and fat mass all into account, whereas a lot of them are much more vague than that. So in order to find the BMR, we need to have these variables, lean body mass, fat mass, sex, age, et cetera, et cetera. So in order to find the lean body mass, we have to have the body weight. And Dylan weighed, what was it, 2? 235.5. And the body fat percentage was 18 and a half, so what we're going to go with. Roughly an average, 17. <laughs> so we got 18.5 percent, and then the body weight. So we we're gonna do this based off of a kilo, um, uh, kilogram measurement, not pounds. So we have to first convert the body weight in pounds to kilograms. So 235.5 times this. You can certainly round and save yourself some time. Um, 235.5 times. 0.45, we'll just do 0.45. That's going to be 105.98 kilograms. So we'll swap that in right there. 105.98 minus the body fat, and we're going to do that as a decimal. So we'll just do 0.185 times the body weight, which again is the 105.98. This is gonna give us a lean body mass of 86.37 kilograms. So now we know this number right here. We need to also know fat mass. 
fat mass is going to be calculated by simply taking our total mass, 105.98, subtracting our lean mass of 86.37, and that's going to give us 19.61 is our fat mass. Again, this is all in kilograms. Keep in mind, y'all, the lean body mass does not just equate to total muscle mass. Lean body mass takes into consideration your, your bones, your hair, your tissues, your fingernails, all of that stuff, your fluid retention. So Dylan does not have um, 86.37 kilograms of pure lean muscle mass. He'd be jacked if that was the case, and he's not as jacked as me, so that's not the case. Um, so now that we know that, we can start plugging in into the Muller equation here. So... 13.587 times lean body mass of 86.37 plus 9.613 times the fat mass of 19.61 plus 198 times, now sex, that's going to be your level of sexiness. I would be a 10, Dylan would be probably closer to like six and a half. Um, actually, I'm just kidding. Sex is male is going to be notated as a one, females are a zero. So, oh, sorry about that, Dylan. Let's put one right there. And then we're going to do 3.351 times age, how old are you? 27 years old plus 674. Let me calculate this real quick. All right, so when you do all of this calculation, you're going to wind up with a total of 2,143.5 calories. Now, that is going to be Dylan's basal metabolic rate. That would be, in a perfect situation, based off his stats alone, the amount of calories Dylan would have to consume if he was in a state of coma, a, com a coma, to not gain or lose weight. So basically, basal metabolic rate. Not, that doesn't count as activity, that doesn't count as you know, fidgeting throughout the day, that doesn't count anything but just the, the things needed to function uh, from a metabolic standpoint. Now, that gives us our BMR, but we need to factor in our NEAT, our exercise, and our thermic effect of food. We're not going to worry with the thermic effect of food. Protein has a higher thermic effect of food, but when you average that out over the course of a day, relative to other macronutrients, it becomes a negligible amount, not worth really adjusting your macronutrient intake based off of from a maintenance calorie standpoint. So we'll just bypass that and focus on the NEAT and the exercise. There are certain trackers that give you an estimation as to how many calories you're burning throughout the day, like the SEP counters, the Fitbits, things like that. A good easy way to do it is just to kind of use an activity multiplier. So 1.2 would be someone who works at a desk all day long and doesn't really train or do anything like that. A 1.375 would be slightly above that. I personally do a 1.55 for myself because I train throughout the week. I train five, six, seven times a, a week, but I'm at the computer most of the time outside of the gym. So if you were doing like a triathlon on every day and just doing obscene amounts of exercise and activity, and you were a construction worker, that would be a 1.9. So Dylan, how many days a week you train Dylan? Four. He's here making bricks all day. Probably not burning just a ton of calories doing that, but he is on his feet all day. So I'm going to go with the 1.55 for Dylan. So that said, our TDEE, total daily energy expenditure for Dylan, can be the 2,143, 143 times our activity multiplier of 1.55. And that will yield a total daily energy expenditure of 3,321 calories, 3,321 calories. So based off of his current activity level and stats, Dylan needs to be consuming around 3,300 calories to maintain his current weight. All right, so let's do a little quick jump deep dive into macro recommendations. You can go online, you can find a million different macro recommendations that are gonna say, this is what your fat needs to be, this is what your protein needs to be, this is what your carbs need to be, et cetera, et cetera. 
And I honestly don't recommend deviating too far from what your baseline maintenance intake is in the beginning because if you're doing a cut, for instance, and your maintenance intake is 3,000 calories and those calculators are saying, okay, if you want to lose, lose weight, let's automatically drop you to 2,000 calories, your body may have responded to a decrease in calories at 2,800 calories. And you're leaving a ton of caloric possibility on the table by not taking advantage of that. So regardless of whether you're trying to build muscle or lose body fat, I always recommend starting pretty close to your maintenance intake and then either titrating up or down based off of the goals. So Dylan's goal right now is to build muscle. Um, so I don't want to really put him in a deficit from that 3,300 calories because that's not really going to bode well towards building muscle. So I'm going to kind of depending on what you want to do, Dylan's ketogenic, so we're going to put him on ketogenic macros. If he was trying to lose body fats and he had just started doing a ketogenic diet, I'm probably going to start him out at about 80% fat ratio, which is going to be low on the protein, but then I would then adjust macros every single week while I'm simultaneously increasing protein and dropping fat to figure out what his unique sweet spot is, his protein threshold is. Since he's trying to build muscle, I don't need to have him lower on the protein to begin with, and he already is fat adapted, so I don't need to worry about that either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his 3,300 calories, and we're going to put him at about a 70% fat ratio. It's going to be pretty close to a one-to-one. -one. So I'm just going to do 0.70 times 3,321, and that's going to be 2,324 calories from fat. And since there are nine calories per gram of fat, we can simply divide that by nine. And we know that Dylan needs to consume about 258 grams of fat. Now, what about the other macronutrients? Since he is keto, we're going to cap his carbs, total carbs, at about 20 grams total carbs a day. 20 grams total carbs, 20 times four calories per gram in a carb, is going to be 80 calories in carbohydrates. So we'll do 80 calories from carbs. And then we can basically subtract that out to find his protein. So if we've got um, 2,324 calories plus the 80 from the carbs, that's leaving us 2,404 calories left. Subtract that from that 3,321. Um, and we have 917 calories in protein. Divide that by four. And we have 200 and basically 30 grams worth of protein. And that is where we're going to start dealing off on his macros. 230 grams of protein. 258 grams of fat, 20 grams of carbs, and then we can kind of scale that up or down based off of how his body is feeling, what his composition is looking like, how his strength and recovery are, are handling this, and then just really dial things in for him specifically. I'm about to calculate everybody's macros now so the whole Keto Savage Compound crew can get dialed in, and hopefully y'all learn something from this and can factor this into whatever your journey is as well. Let us know in the comments if you got any questions, and there's going to be more of these tutorials coming your way, so get ready for that.